everybody, it's Tox from Crits Happen. Thanks so much for watching and welcome back. Today, we're gonna talk about Scythe Digital. Lots of things, so many awesome things. Uh, first thing, as you can see right there, I'm showing a little bit of the tutorial menus. There's an online lobby. Uh, the tutorials are actually really good. I actually really I have enjoyed them. They've been pretty well thought out and well placed. So if you don't know what Scythe is, Honestly, you probably shouldn't be watching our channel. Uh, Scythe is one of the most popular board games in the hobby board game market right now. It's from Stonemaier Games. This is an Asmodee digital version of the game that you're going to be able to play through your computer. Now, this is being played on an Alienware M17. It is on Steam, and we're going to do a new game here. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my information. Then you can select uh, everything. You can select your faction. You can select your player mat. You can select how many bots, how many other players you have, uh, and you can randomize things. I went random. I have Rusviet here, and we're going to have some different things that you see. You see your faction ability. You see your, in the upper left, you see your secret objectives in the lower left. You see your structure bonus for the game in the upper right. What the other players are playing in the lower right. And then you're starting resources in the middle. How much power, coins, ammo, and popularity you have. Now, ammo in this game, it's a little different. In, in the physical game, it's called combat cards. And they may change to that when they finally go back to things here. Um, they, but basically, your ammo is your combat card. It's the easiest way to think about it. You have uh, ammo cards or ammo, ammo values, and you'll use those during the game. Really, really sharp presentation. Like, immediately it comes right in and tells you who the player is, what faction they're playing, what their player mat is, and kind of a dynamic, I don't know, a dynamic scape, landscape kind of look to it here. Uh, the artwork, of course, inside is absolutely gorgeous, and we're going to get off and running. So you'll see here, and mind you, this is a beta. This is not close to finish yet, so don't think this is the final product, but this is just a good way to see what's going on. So you'll see at the bottom, my options in blue that are highlighted are things that I can take as my top action. Uh, if you're familiar with Scythe, of course, you take a top action and then a bottom action. You can do both, um, but you can't always do your bottom actions immediately because you have to start getting resources and stuff. The track along the left there shows you what the previous players have done. So it shows you the Nordic player chose to move two of his characters, which are encapsulated and surrounded by blue. It shows me, uh, Rusviet, moving two characters surrounded in red. And then it shows production from Crimea and then moving from Saxony. So there's a really easy way to keep track of what each player chose to do on their turn and what the last couple of actions were. Um, at the top of the screen, you'll see that we have our money, our popularity, our power, and our ammo available to us. And we're going to be able to expand that, which we'll show you throughout the game, to get more information. Producing is simple as choosing produce, choosing the two areas that you produce on. Um, the game does a really good job of m doing the fiddly bits uh, that a worker placement Euro resource management game does. Uh, but making it really smooth and really quick. I also really love the fact that they gave the workers personality, not just blank wood workers. I think they've done a really good job with that. You see here you can expand both your resources and what you have available to each player. So you can see a lot of information really quickly and be able to collapse that or expand that as well. So... I really like the Rusviet faction. They have the ability to choose the same action on their player board turn after turn, which can be really, really powerful and really helpful. And you'll see here we're going to do our first bottom action of upgrading, pay three oil to unlock an extra benefit from a top action and decreasing the cost of a bottom action. You select that and confirm it. You choose your resources and then you go ahead and pick which top action you want to uh, benefit and uh, get a more benefit from and which bottom action you will then decrease. Um, for this one, I chose to go with production uh, and lowering my upgrade. So I'm going to go on an upgrade track. So next time I produce, I'll be able to produce on three different hexes. And next time I upgrade, it's only going to cost me two oil versus three oil, which is really nice as well. Uh, you can see that uh, Crimea is doing something very similar here. Um, this is an interesting game. I'm not going to give it away. I'm actually recording the audio after having played the game. Um, the AI uh, right now, I think I don't think there's a way to change the AI. I haven't figured that out if there is or not. 
Um, but the AI for the Nordic and the Crimea are really interesting in this game, and, and I would highly suggest to follow that and watch how that plays out. Um, Saxony, not so much, uh, which is kind of interesting. I really like playing Saxony. It's one of my favorite factions. Uh, here we get our first encounter card, so you'll see some of the choices, and they're pretty good, actually. Uh, I love the artwork on these cards. Um, the uh, help an inventor gain two oil and one popularity is good. Paying $3 to build a structure is pretty good, especially when our structure bonuses give us uh, endgame bonuses next to lakes. You'll see that my character there is next to a lake, so that could be a good option to go ahead and do that. Uh, you may remember from the beginning, so it shows us here the structure bonus. Number of lakes adjacent to your structure only count each lake once. Uh, the other thing, too, is that I'm going to get a potential for completing one of my uh, objectives if I have buildings built not adjacent to my home base. So this kind of helps me double up immediately from the very beginning, which is really good. Now, by no means, with all the videos I do and all the games I play, just because I play a lot of games does not mean I am the best at what I do. <laughs> so I am sure I will make some strategic choices here that may flip some people out. And the internet is always good and will tell me and remind me about that. And I appreciate it. Let me know if you see a bad move so I can always become a better player, which is good. But I am by no means the Scythe World Champion in any country, shape, form, or fashion anywhere in the world. Not even in my own imaginary head. But... I do really like playing Scythe. I have played Scythe quite a bit. I have painted all my miniatures for Scythe uh, and just really enjoy it. Uh, for those of you who know me and have followed the channel, I am a big fan of Stone Mayor Games. Jamie Stegmeyer, the owner, is a tremendous person individually, but he is also a great person in the gaming industry as well. And I really like a lot of their games. Uh, I loved Euphoria, which this has some roots to. I love Viticulture. love everything that they do. So Scythe is easily one of their top games uh, we just finished charterstone a game from them and it was very good although i still go back to scythe and 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 get all those itches scratched from scythe which is really cool and you'll see here what i was mentioning before saxony starts getting their their mechs out and it gets interesting saxony really benefits because you can win multiple fights and and that's really cool but it it doesn't seem to come together in this game from that AI. Um, so I'm going to start to spread out a little bit here, and I'm going to start to do some interesting things. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some more production. Now that I can produce on three lands, I'm going to get more people in my village, more iron, more oil, which is good, especially since I only need two oil to upgrade and two iron to get a mech out now because I've already upgraded again. And that's going to help me later on. As of course you know, the object of Scythe is to get six stars. Uh, end the game and have the most points based on different factors in the game. But there are multiple things you get stars for, and of course getting all four mechs out is one of those things. So being able to basically get a mech and two coins for only two iron is really, really good. But to be frank, I don't use that strategy until much later. So um, there's some interesting things here. I'm really, I like encounter cards. I think encounter cards do a lot of more for you as a player they they open up options for you so let's go ahead and produce again and we'll get some more people out i'm going to kind of rush to get all of my uh, workers out which will be able to offer me a star on the board but also offer me the ability to get more resources out plus i started the game with a good amount of popularity and power which is good because as you start to get more people out on the board, you're going to have to pay popularity and pay power to uh, produce. Pay popularity, pay power to produce. Wow, that's a lot of alliteration. Um, <laughs> so that'll be uh, something that will benefit me in the long term, I, I think. Plus, we've already got the ability to pay a coin and get two popularity from doing some upgrade stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll be able to kind of offset the two. Now, there is a encounter token down here just below the lake, which is something I might want to go towards. Might be a good thing to do. Uh, might be good to get some power, though. So it's it's always good whenever you need to not always have the best aligned top and bottom actions to do what you can with the best that you have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my first mech out here and get Riverwalk. Um, as much as I have tried, I have yet to really see a good strategy with the Rusviets not getting Riverwalk as your first one. 
it just helps you get out there and, and kind of spread your feet a little more, which is important because the more land masses you control at the end of the game, the better your points are going to be. And obviously getting the most points is the best part of the game because that means you win. Um, as you can see, the digital implementation of the physical board game is really well done in my opinion. Um, little tiny things make the difference, right? The ability to have personality for the workers, but still look like tactile objects. The fact that they use the three-dimensional resources I think is really cool. I really would have liked to see them use the look of the resources that were in the deluxe Kickstarter because those are just absolutely gorgeous. But I think that this is definitely good because you, you can see pretty easily, hey, there's two oil on that piece. Now, you could say that it does kind of blend in a little bit, but again, beta. So it would not surprise me. Most every game that Asmodee Digital has touched and done and worked on just comes out absolutely gorgeous at the end of the day. So it would not surprise me if those things get better. Um, you'll notice, you know, so uh, when you pick an action like this one, I'm picking move, you don't actually pick the action when you select on the bar in the lower left until you actually hit confirm in that kind of text box area in the middle lower right. Now, when you're moving, you can transport stuff. So you can see here, it gives me the option to transport some items. I have two oils, so I can take two oil with me. So I can choose one or two or however many I want to take with me. I'm going to take them with me because I don't want to lose them, which is important. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and pick up my mech. Now, you can transport people with mechs, and you'll notice here that if you select them one at a time, you move them over. The arrows uh, move them all, so you just you, you don't want to necessarily move all of them. So I'm just going to take two with me, and we're going to go up to the farm and, and start to farm a little bit, which is hopefully going to help us out because we do need four food to be able to enlist a recruit. That's a lot of food, especially for the Rusviets because, you know, the Russians don't feed their people. I don't know. That's political. I'm not getting into that. So here we are. You can see powers building up from people. Uh, there's getting to be some options for some combat possibly coming up. Um, we'll kind of walk through what happens with that when we get there. Saxony is still kind of building up their forces and they're not, not really moving out, which is kind of interesting. Um, and the Nordics, who are really sneaky, you got to watch out for them. See, here comes their first mech. They're going to get a plus one movement. Uh, that can get pretty crazy with the Nordics, especially with their whole submerge ability of going through rivers uh, and walking around places, which is pretty good, especially when you get into the combinations of fighting and stuff. Uh, so you see here, I have some options for some top and bottom actions. Uh, my leftmost action is lit up. You may be saying, what is that area on the left with the kind of gear symbol and the, the star? What is that there for? Well, that is there for when you get to the factory. When you move your character to the factory, you're going to be able to gain a factory card that will give you a new ability. And that ability will go into that area, which is kind of cool. You know, you don't end up always having one, but for the most part, you can usually get one pretty quick. So I'm going to go ahead and shut up and let everybody enjoy the gameplay here of Scythe Digital. So here's our first fight. So uh, you can see how I have uh, a combat card of three and a power of four to get to seven. That would be the maximum. You can look at what your opponent has. The maximum they have is seven. Are they going to pump everything in? Uh, they do, and they added ammo. So, okay, so we lost, so that's not good. My whole plan of going down to that mountain and getting the encounter card and bringing my oil with me turned into a backfire. That's that's not good. So uh, we'll have to recover from that. So we'll have to see how that works. So I do have a three combat card and a two combat card, or ammo as they call it in the game again. So let's go ahead and move and, and kind of get some people back out here. Um, I think... I think we might want to move the mech back a little bit. Um, I don't want to leave that one worker with the one oil left. That could be bad. And this will allow us to get another encounter card anyway. Uh, wow. Pay $2 to gain four food is pretty good. Uh, that may be the winner. Um, the others are good. Gain two and one popularity or two popularity to gain two ammo and three power. Not bad. 18 power gets you a star, but I'm at zero power. $2 to gain four food could be pretty good, though, because that could immediately 
go ahead and help me down the road of enlistment. And enlistment is pretty important. Uh, as you enlist characters, of course, you end up with bonus abilities when your neighboring left and right factions take actions. And that that can help you out in the long run. I have seen many people enlist very early and make that a strategy. And it turns into something pretty important down the road, which is good. So overall, I really like this edition of Scythe. I mean, Scythe is a great game. It's one of the, the best games on the market right now, in my opinion. And being able to play it digitally is phenomenal. Uh, I can see this potentially already translating to a touch type uh, device, you know, going to like an iPad or a, a tablet device. Uh, but that's still probably a lot down the road. This is definitely a digital like Steam played on your computer game. And it comes along great. I mean, I end up playing you know, four or five player games in about 30 minutes, which is phenomenal. I took a little longer in this one to kind of move around and show you know what's going on and what's happening. But you can move pretty quick. Uh, also, of course, being digital, there's no setup to it whatsoever. I mean, you don't have to worry about getting bits and bytes and things and little pieces out and you know setting up all the uh, campaign tokens or the encounter tokens and doing all that. So there, there's definitely a lot of advantages to playing digital. Um, of course, being able to play online is phenomenal as well, right? Being able to, uh, you know, be in Chicago, be in Texas, be in Russia, be in England, be in Spain, Italy, wherever you may be, and play against other players, that's going to be really, really big. I mean, one of the most fun things that I've had in playing Scythe is playing Scythe at shows, at conventions, when you get to play with people you don't normally play with in your game group. And especially for a game like this that's really strategic and really, you know, heavy resource management, you can find a lot of very unique cultural input from strategies from people who don't live in your country, which I think is really cool. Hi, I'm Saxony. I'm just going to build a bunch of mechs. That's all I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to threaten you with a bunch of mechs and not not end up doing anything. It's kind of weird. Uh, but the Nordics, as you can see, they got pretty aggressive with me, which I like. I, I kind of like the fact that the AI can realize, hey, this is a good opportunity. Let's go in and steal these resources. Uh, I didn't have any uh, workers with me, so there was no worry for them to go do that, which you know, I, I, I kind of commend the AI for doing that. Um, plus, they always have a lot of real sneaky options with the Nordics being able to move through the, the oceans or through the lakes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and upgrade again. Uh, I, I'm getting closer and, and a little more fluid with the strategy. Uh, this will help us uh, with the food. We have three food already. So being able to have three food to enlist, we'll get a few more enlistments out, which will be good. In the meantime, I am going to shut up, let you all enjoy. Uh, here you see the objectives real quick. You see the uh, two options we have. When we do complete them, we'll, the complete button will light up green, and we can click on those to complete them. Uh, that will come into play later on, but for now, I'm going to shut up, let you guys and girls enjoy Scythe Digital in all of its glory, and I'll come back towards the end to have a few closing remarks.
Hey, can you hear me?
All right, so here we are. We're coming towards the end. I'm feeling feeling like I'm in a good position here. And you may say, but it's not anywhere close to the end. There's only one player with four stars, and that's true, but I'm about to get pretty aggressive with a lot of my gameplay here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and build another structure. Part of my factory card that I got was pay two non-equal resources and build. So I'm gonna build here. This is a great build spot because there's two lakes next to it, but you'll see now I've completed my build local infrastructure objective. So I've completed that and I've gotten not only my fourth star, but my fifth star as well, now that I have all of my buildings built. And that's really, really beneficial. I'm gonna start to get kind of aggressive here at the end game. Uh, I will move some people around here to hopefully gain the advantage of more hexes because again as you get towards the end of the game having those more hexes is important and even more important is i'm really close to tier two in the scoring uh, i have five popularity if i can get up to seven that will of course help me out so kind of pushing to get to there uh, i've got some potential threats coming at me here though at the factory and that's a little worrisome because the factory counts as three hexes for endgame scoring so that's something i probably want to protect i'm not sure who to really protect from but i think it's better to protect from crimea right now uh saxony doesn't really seem to have the right ai on its shoulders so to speak so i'm gonna go ahead and protect from them uh they still could come in through the bottom so we'll have to kind of watch out for that i mean the factory's tough once you get there it's easy to get there it's harder to hold on to it so uh and quite frankly losing that that factory could be really bad for me right now so i just i need to pay attention and make sure i'm covered on that so i only need one more star here to be able to finish out and i think i can get that with the right positioning here we're we're kind of getting close to it i may want to get a little bit more but this is this is the interesting part about scythe to me you know do you push to try and spread your wings and get more points or do you feel like you have enough points already uh, my big thing right now is really just kind of getting up a little bit more in popularity, I think. I think being able to, to finish that out is really going to help us out. Getting into Tier 2 will get us to a final point of, hey, the, the end game bonuses with the structures, having uh, multiple areas of control, that, that could really, really be an important piece of this. So I've got a lot of options, which is good. I have... Uh, a lot of different things I can do, but being able to go ahead and pay a coin and get to popularity seems to be the right way to go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade. Uh, this is obviously not going to get me my final, uh, my final option here. I'm not going to get my final star out, uh, but it does put me in a good position for next turn because now I only have one more mech to get out, and that final mech will give me my final star. And now after that last upgrade... It's only going to cost me one iron to do that. So I can go ahead and more than likely get that last mech out and pump out that sixth star. Now again, remember, this is beta. So when the final star gets dropped, there's no like massive fanfare or anything. It's actually, it just immediately is going to drop right into the uh, kind of the next move here, which is going to be interesting. But... Uh, I think we got a good option, and I think we have enough hexes. We're, we're spread thin. I mean, one bad move here could, or one good move by our opponent, one bad choice by us in a previous action could really lay us out pretty hard. Uh, but I think we're going to be okay. So uh, this will be our last shot here. We'll go ahead and uh, do the uh, bottom action of being able to bring out our mech. I'll probably go ahead and get a little bit more power uh, just for fun and giggles. Why not? Uh, gives me a little more popularity and then we'll pay to get the last mech out and uh, that of course will give me plus one speed but it won't matter because it's the last action of the game and boom there we go total for Rusvi at 76 points and you can see that pushing into tier two was a big part of that and a big help with that and you can minimize this to look at the board and see you know kind of where everybody was what kind of point structure everybody had 
Um, and that's really cool because you can see a lot of details on it. There's also a little details button at the bottom where you can see more of the details. You just kind of uh, uh, click on that to go ahead and expand what tier people were in and how many points they got from that. But we did really good. I mean, I felt really good about that. Of course, you're playing against computer players and not against human players. So there is always that. But that is Scythe digital i hope that you've enjoyed this as much as i did playing it if you do like it let me know we're happy to do some more videos on this uh, and if you're playing side digital reach out my player name is toxic t-o-x-z-i-q and hopefully we can get a game in until next time though we hope that you've enjoyed side digital and we hope that you enjoy playing in this beta that's available to some people right now let us know your thoughts leave a comment below in the youtube channel of course you can chime in on facebook twitter and instagram by searching crits happen please like share, subscribe, turn on notifications, tell your friends how much you've enjoyed watching this video. And until we see you next time, thanks so much for watching. Keep rolling those dice, and we hope they're all crits.